I'm going to walk through these problems pretty quickly. So make sure that if you don't understand something, you make a note to come and ask me about it at another time. So we did number two as an example in um, at least one of my classes. So I'm going to start with number three. A car traveling at 11.00 meters per second accelerates at 0 0.10 meters per second squared for one minute. How far does the car go in this time? So what you're looking for is how far. How far is a distance or a displacement? So you look at your um, givens, what do you know? You've got 11.00 meters per second. The car is already going at that velocity, so that's your initial velocity, your VI. We know that the car is accelerating at this rate, 0 0.10 meters per second squared. Now, and that squared right there, that's part of the unit. That doesn't mean that you have to do anything to the number itself. It's part of the units for acceleration. You only square something if it's in the equation. So you have to be really careful to pay attention. What's the difference between a squared in the units and a squared in the equation? And the other thing you have here is one minute time. But notice also that our units for velocity are using seconds. Our units for acceleration are using seconds. So we can't leave this as one minute. We have to turn that into seconds. And hopefully you know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So the first thing that you have to do then is to write down your givens. And we have our givens right over here. VI at 11 meters per second. Our acceleration, 0 0.10 meters per second squared. And our time is 60 seconds. Remember again that we're looking for how far. So that's our D, that's our unknown, D equals. Looking at the possible equations and what variables we know, we have a VI, we have an A, and we have a T. So we're going to use the last equation on your sheet, VI times T plus one half times a times t squared. And remember from algebra, when you see numbers next to each other, uh, like these are here, you're just multiplying all three of those together. So we substitute what we know into our equation. And we have 11 meters per second times 60 seconds, that's our vi times t, we've got that right there. We've got one half a t squared, we've got that over here. Okay, you only use the one half in there once, only multiply it one time. And remember in this case, the squared goes with the time, so you have to square 60 seconds. 60 times 60 is 3,600. So when you go through the whole process, um, step by step, you will see that your final displacement, how far does the car go in that time, is 840 meters. Number four, a train traveling at 6.4 meters per second accelerates at 0 0.10 meters per second squared over a distance of 100 meters. What is the train's final velocity? So we're looking for final velocity, which is a VF. We know that it's already traveling at 6.4 meters per second. So that's our VI. We know that we are accelerating at 0 0.10 meters per second squared. That's our acceleration. And you can use the units as a clue also. If you're not sure what that number is supposed to be representing, look at the units. That'll narrow it down for you. There's only so many things it could be. And a distance of 100 meters. What's the final velocity? So first thing we do 
is write down our givens. What do we know? Givens, we've got a VI. We've got an A. And we've got a D. We know that we're looking for final velocity. So VF equals question mark. That's our unknown. When you look at your equations, don't try to make something fit. Use what you have and see if there's a choice. Now you could be really complicated and try and find some other variable, but you have an equation that all three of these will fit into quite nicely. And that's the square root of vi squared plus 2 times a times d. Now remember this squared refers to that number, so we're going to square our initial velocity. When you have 2ad, you're taking 2 times a times d. You're not distributing, you're just multiplying all three of those numbers together. And don't forget to take the square root. Do all of the underneath part and then take the square root. So showing you our work, we've got our initial velocity squared, 6.4 meters per second squared is where we get that 40.96 and then 2 times 0 0.10 times 100 gives us this 20 over here. We add those together and then you still have to take the square root. When you do that you get VF is equal to 7.8 meters per second. Number five, a skateboarder starts from rest and maintains a constant forward acceleration of 0 0.50 meters per second squared for 8.4 seconds. What is the skateboarder's final displacement? Final displacement, D, you're looking for a D. A skateboarder starts from rest, starts from rest, from rest meaning not moving, starts tells you it's an initial VI maintains a constant forward acceleration of 0 0.50 meters per second squared for 8.4 seconds. That's our time, 8.4 seconds. So we write down, what do we know? What are we looking for? We know a VI, that's our from rest. We know an A, we know a T, and we know from the question here that we're looking for final displacement. When you look at your equations, you'll see that um, the equation that uses all three of these variables that you already have up here is VIT plus one half AT squared. And once again, remember that that squared belongs just with the t. And you're multiplying one half times a times t squared. So we plug in what we know and we get 0 times 8.4 which gives us 0 for that first part. And then we have one half times a times t squared. Okay one-half times a times t squared. When you keep adding all those up, you can just leave your answer as 17.64 meters, that's fine, or you can round to 18, either one is acceptable. Number six we did as an example in class. Number seven, a bicyclist initially traveling at 14 meters per second slows down with an acceleration of negative 1.5 meters per second squared. What will the bicyclist's velocity be after three seconds? Now don't get yourself confused. Pay attention to what the question is asking. What will the bicyclist's velocity be? You already have a time, three seconds. It's telling you that's the time. What it's looking for is what will the velocity be? You're already traveling at 14 meters per second. That's your VI. 
you know that you're slowing down and that your acceleration is negative 1.5 and yes the negative matters so write down what you know you've got a VI you've got an A you've got a T you're looking for VF you're looking for velocity at the end of the trip and your equation that uses all of those is VI plus a T. Plug in what you know. VI is 14 meters per second. A is negative 1.5 meter per second squared. T is 3.0 seconds. When you multiply the two of those together, you get negative 4.5 plus 14 gives you a final answer of 9.5 meters per second. Notice I'm not squaring this number because that squared is just in the units. It's not part of the equation. That's a, a thing that I was seeing on several people's papers, so be really, really mindful of that. Number eight, eight had three parts. So you've got a couple of givens that you're using for the entire um, problem. And then there's a couple of different times. So we gotta pay attention to what the question is asking. A rolling ball has an initial velocity of 1.6 meters per second. If the ball has a constant forward acceleration of 0 0.33 meters per second squared, what is its velocity after 3.6 seconds? So we know we're looking for what is the velocity. When you go back and reread, what do you know? Initial velocity, it even says right there, initial velocity, 1.6 meters per second. It says right here, constant forward acceleration, 0 0.33 meters per second squared. And after 3.6 seconds, it tells you a time. Write down what we know and what we're looking for. A VI, an A, a T. We know we're looking for VF, so we look and see which equation uses all three of those variables. And we get VI plus a T. And you plug those numbers in. You've got your VI right here, plus A times T. When you do order of operations, that's another thing I was seeing on people's papers. You want to plug it all into the calculator and call it good, but you can't do that. You have to remember your order of operations. PEMDAS, so multiply first, then add. And when you do that, you get our final answer. VF is equal to 2.8 meters per second. 8B, you're working with the same givens. And now it says how far did the ball travel during this time? So you look back at the previous question. And you still have the same initial velocity, same acceleration, same time. Now, if you really wanted to, you could bring in the final velocity that you found in the last question, but you don't have to, because if you look at your equations, you, you can see you can find a distance or a displacement with just these three variables by using this equation, vi times t plus one-half at squared. Get used to that one, because you're going to be using that equation a lot. We plug in what we know, and we've got our initial velocity times the time, and then you've got one half times acceleration times time squared. And this number right here, 12.96, that's time squared. Um, when you multiply these three numbers together, then you add them to these two numbers multiplied together, the first two you get a final answer of 7.9 meters. And the last one. 
you're starting with some of the same givens. You've got the same initial velocity, 1.6 meters per second. You're going to have the same acceleration because it hasn't said anything about the ball slowing down or stopping or turning around or anything like that. So you're assuming that your acceleration is the same. But now we're looking at how far would it go in a different time. Different time means that it's going to be speeding up that entire time. So the final velocity that you found in part A, you can't use that. Some people were wanting to use that in the equation to solve for how far, but you can't because it's a different time, which means you're going to be going a different speed. So you put down your givens, same initial velocity, same acceleration, now we've got a different time, 6.2 seconds. We're looking for how far did the ball go. Same equation, vi times t plus 1 half a t squared. Plug in your givens, now you're using 6.2 seconds instead of the previous one, 3.6. When you do all of the calculations, you end up with a final answer, 16.3 meters. Now, as I was saying before, a lot of times what you're going to have to do is basically work your problem backwards. You can't plug it all into the calculator all in one big long string and expect the calculator to just understand what you mean. The calculator, um, unless you use parentheses really carefully, is not going to do the correct order of operations. It's going to just do whatever you punched in in the order you punched it in. So um, that's another reason why it's really important to show your work, show your substitutions, because um, a lot of times you'll have the work written out correctly, but you have the wrong answer because of just the way that you put it into your calculator. So make sure that you are asking questions, asking for help, if there's anything that you don't understand or anything that you don't um, get why it is or anything that you're just particularly struggling with at this point.